Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today we are going to be learning how to install the Vittoria Airliner. It's better to just get ahead of the frustration. Why take the risk that this is gonna make you have a meltdown? For this task, you will need a Vittoria Airliner, your wheel, your tire, sealant of your choice, this little syringe widget for your sealant, tire levers, an X-Acto knife, zip tie, the ever-present pokey tool, valve core remover, air compressor or a pump, a widget with which to cut. Oh, cutting widget. First of all, what is a tire insert? If you're like, I don't know what I'm doing on this video, I have no idea what's going on, a tire insert <laughs> is basically anything that you put in your tire to help prevent flats. This is the Vittoria Airliner. There are quite a few brands that make something like this. If you are someone who is prone to flats, specifically pinch flats, you should really look into using tire inserts. If you never get flats, like, Go watch one of our other videos, it's fine. <laughs> like, a foam tire insert like this really, really reduces the amount of pinch flats you will get because it essentially prevents the tire from folding onto the rim, which is what causes a pinch flat. These inserts will also prevent you from seriously dinging up your rims. If you do manage to get a flat, say you slice a sidewall or something with one of these and you have to ride it out of the woods, I have done that. I didn't have a single dent in my wheel. Very exciting. It will also allow you to run a little bit lower pressure without having to worry about flats. So all around, these are awesome. Vittoria does make different size tire inserts for pretty much any type of riding from XC, you would want a small. Well, that's what we'll be installing today is the small, all the way up to fat bikes, obviously. And there also is a gravel one. We typically don't use inserts for our XC and gravel bikes. We do, however, generally have an insert in the rear on the trail bikes and in both the front and the rear for our enduro or any bike that we're gonna ride at like a downhill park. There are quite a few different tire inserts out on the market. We have also used quite a few. Um, we've used Schwalbe Procore. It is a very effective system at preventing flats. It's also like a huge pain in the butt. We have not used Cushcore. I think it is a great product, however, However, from what we've heard and observed of other people dealing with Cushcore, it is much, much harder than the airline to install. That's something that we're super grateful for with this product is that it both works and as you will see shortly, does not turn the tire install process into a huge nightmare. All right, you've done this before. What's our first step? We've done this many times before. <laughs> this is old hat task for me. First thing we're gonna do Grab our insert, grab our wheel. There's no right side up. You can just cut it if you have a 26 or a 27 five wheel. This is a 29er wheel. So we won't cut it as much as we would otherwise. They always come super long and then you cut it down to this length size that you want. You do want to pull kind of tight here. Give this a little good little tug tug. And I'm just gonna score it so I know where to cut. You generally want to cut it slightly shorter than you marked so that you do have to stretch it together. These will stretch out over time after you've had one in there for a while. You may start to hear a little like thump, thump, thump as you're riding because it isn't sitting tight into that wheel area. What is <laughs> Wheel well? <laughs> what is it called? Basically it stretches out. So yeah. over time it will stretch out a little bit. Not a big deal. You just pop your wheel off, cut, a centimeter or whatever off of it and then put it back on. So super easy to fix. All right, we're gonna go ahead and poke a hole on each side. And as you're doing the this- The pokey sure... tool back for the win. As you're doing this, make sure that you don't do it over your rim tape <laughs> because if you puncture your rim tape, that is not good. We poked these holes so that we can attach it with a zip tie. We did a video about airliners when they came out years ago. People were like, that's really easy. You could just use a pool noodle. The advantage of something like this or Cushcore over a DIY pool noodle insert is it does not absorb your sealant and it doesn't flatten over time. I think they say it's like a thousand hour riding hours. It's more than you're going to get out of your tire. We will swap these between tires when we replace a tire. And then they say that if you do get a flat and have to run it on a flat, that you still get an hour of riding on it before it like wears it out. Yeah, I did one stage that was like, I did the entire stage 
on a flat tire on an airliner and it was fine. I mean, my tire wasn't fine. But the rim was fine. Yeah, and I only lost like a minute overall, which still Pretty sucked. Good. Yeah. Because it was like a 20 minute stage and I flat it at the top. That's all you do to connect it real straightforward. And as you can see, it should require a little bit of, yeah, like it's just a little bit of work to like pop it into place, which means it's the perfect size. Now that we know this fits, we're gonna pull this off. We're gonna put our tire on. We're gonna get, get it going the right direction. I'm having a... We have cleaned and dried off our tire. That is sort of, if you've watched any of our tire changing tubeless videos, clean, dry, wheel, and tire. That is your ticket to success, whether you have a liner or not. I will say that I do think the airliner often makes difficult tubeless setups seat up easier. Yeah. More easily -er? More easily? There's something about that sentence that I just couldn't, I wasn't nailing it. We've even lined up our logo. Good job, I noticed that you did that, I was appreciative. Yeah, I've now been, I've been logo shamed <laughs> by the entire internet. I've conformed, my spark is gone. <laughs> my rebellious spark has been quashed. Yeah, this is a question that people always have is they're like, how hard is it to put in? And the truth is it's actually really easy. Although right now it's like not uh -oh. all the way on. Good call. So Good catch. Thank you. you basically want to tuck the airliner so that it's all the way in the wheel channel or in the wheel well. And then you just do what you would do. Otherwise work your way around. I, mean, I think it is moderately more difficult. It's not like we have watched like full-time mechanics cry over cush core setups. <laughs> so it's not that, it's definitely not that. Okay, this is the part where it's gonna be a little challenging. What is gonna make it easier for you? Pushing this off the bead on the other side? Get, getting the bead all the way in because it's the bead is not centered on this side at all. So that's sure. the thing that is harder with an airliner in there is it's harder to get the bead into the center because there's a big green thing in the way. And again, like if you don't get flats, don't bother with this, like 100% don't bother with it. However, if you do get a lot of flats, this is way less annoying than getting flats. So you just wanna make sure that the bead is in the center of the wheel, tucked underneath the airliner. And that's what Sid has done. And so you can see she's getting pretty close. What do you wanna do when you're using a tire lever? not wreck your rim tape. Yes, and how is a good way to make sure you don't do that? By being gentle. And also not doing it right over a spoke. There she goes. Come on, baby. Okay, I don't think I... There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this valve core. We are going to use an air compressor to fill this up right now because we have one and that is one of the joys of having this amazing workshop. If you do not have an air compressor, you might want to head over to the video right up there where we share our secret for installing tubeless with a floor pump. That trick works just as well with a liner. People always ask about this, what this is. Mackie, what is it? It's basically just <laughs> a rubber tipped sprayer nozzle and it lets out a lot of air at the same time or all at one time. Which so. is great for tubeless. Yeah. I think that was all I needed, but we'll have a little look to make sure it's seated all the way around. It is seated all the way around. So basically what I'm looking for is this little black line is visible at the same distance above the rim all the way around. That's how you know that your tire is seated. And what that means is that when I release all the air, which I'm gonna do right now, because we haven't put our sealant in yet, it's going to stay seated as long as I'm gentle to it, which is awesome because then you can seat it up without your sealant and save yourself just like a lot of headache and mess and just sealant everywhere. And All right, we are using orange seal, regular sealant. We are going to need 29, three to four ounces, which is approximately a quarter of this bottle, but we're not gonna measure because because that's who we are. But if you wanna measure, Knock yourself out. It's all frothy. It's like an orange Julius. Oh, yeah. Does it smell like an orange Julius? It totally smells like it. Does it really? One can kind of tell that you probably shouldn't drink it, but it also sort of smells like an orange Julius. I mean, sealant is like, it's definitely not a like, oh, if you have 
2.9 ounces instead of three, like you don't have enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Got I did it. it. And then push it in and it's all at the same time. There you go. The reason we don't use this when we're first inflating a tire is because it just doesn't let as much air through it as quickly. And for seating up a tubeless tire, you generally want as much airflow at once as possible. If you have the tools to make tubeless easier, like I was saying, this probably would have inflated fine, maybe even with a floor pump, but I think it's better to just get ahead of the frustration with tubeless. It's true. You know, like why, why take the risk that this is gonna make you have a meltdown? You know, like it just, it's just not worth the risk. So we, when we have the air compressor and when we are not in the van without an air compressor, we use it and we use it to the fullest of its capabilities. And I highly recommend you do the same because life's too short to be mad at a tire. All right, we're gonna close that. We're gonna do our favorite part, which is the sealant dance, which is extra important, I feel like, with an insert because it does take a little bit longer to get all the way around. And this is how to install a Victoria airliner in one minute. Start by wrapping the airliner around your clean and dry wheel and marking the point where the two sides overlap. Cut the airliner one centimeter shorter than your mark. As always, measure twice, cut once. Poke a hole in both sides approximately one centimeter from the end. Use a zip tie to attach the two sides, then confirm that it fits the wheel. Now remove the airliner and install one side of the tire. Insert the airliner, centering it on the rim. Install the other side of the tire, tucking the bead under the airliner. Then remove your valve core and inflate until properly seated. Then release the air and add your sealant via the valve stem. Reinstall your valve core and inflate to your desired pressure. Do the obligatory sealant dance and then go out and shred. 